Hello and welcome to Intuit Developer. In this video, we're going to talk about the Time Tracking Sample app. This app represents how a time tracking application can integrate with QBO for recording time and generating associated invoices. We'll also demonstrate how to connect an application to QuickBooks via OAuth and sync employee, customer, and service item data between the time tracking application and QuickBooks. Let's get started. This tutorial assumes you've created a developer account and created an app on the portal. First, download the code from GitHub. The sample app uses the Angular and Spring frameworks, requires Java 1.7 to run, and uses Gradle to pull in all required dependencies. The project's code is broken up into three directories. The source directory contains QuickBooks-specific code for OAuth, SDK calls, and entity mappers. The source general directory contains application-specific code to drive the UI that is not related to integrating with QuickBooks. The public directory contains the UI code. Before you start running the sample app, make sure the token and credentials are set in the OAuth.json file. These can be found in the keys section of your app on the portal. Copy over the app token and OAuth consumer key and secret into the OAuth.json file. Next, open a terminal and go to the sample app directory on your machine. Then type the following command, dot slash gradle w boot run. When you run this command for the first time, it will take a little while for the sample app to start, since Gradle needs to pull in all the dependencies. Once the project is set up, open a browser and go to the following URL. The first step is for a small business owner to connect the app to their QuickBooks company. This gives the app permission via OAuth 1.0 to make API calls against the company's data. The IA.properties file defines the property values that are used by the QuickBooks SDK. The first three values are Intuit URLs that can be considered constants. The final value, OAuth callback URL, will point to the second REST endpoint you implement in this video. To add the Connected QuickBooks button to your web page, First, add a script element pointing to the Intuit Anywhere JavaScript file to your web page. Then add the IPP connected QuickBooks element to your page. Next, you need to initialize the Intuit Anywhere JavaScript library by calling setup and passing two pieces of information. The grant URL, which should point to the first OAuth endpoint we will implement in a moment, and the data sources object, which indicates what permissions your app will be asking for. The next step is implementing the OAuth Info Provider interface. This interface defines a set of methods for accessing and persisting OAuth information in your app. The OAuth Info Provider impl implements the OAuth Info Provider interface and can be found in the controller's package. Now let's look at the REST endpoints that need to be implemented for OAuth. The OAuth controller class implements the required endpoints. The first endpoint to implement is the request token endpoint. It asks the Intuit OAuth API for a request token and request token secret using the SDK's IA platform client class and persists the values on the appropriate company using the OAuth info provider. Finally, the endpoint redirects the user's browser to Intuit's authorized URL. The second required endpoint is the request token ready endpoint. It asks the Intuit OAuth API for an access token and access token secret using the IA platform client class and persists them on the appropriate company. In order to make this final request to the OAuth API, you need a few values. The request token and request token secret that you persisted on the company in the first endpoint and the verifier code which is passed as a request parameter to this endpoint. The next step that a small business owner would go through is syncing data between the app and QBO. In this sample app, we're syncing employees, customers, and service items. Clicking on the sync button for a given entity type sends all entities of that type to QBO and saves the resulting QBO ID in the sample app database. Let's go over the create item in QBO method in the QBO gateway class. First, we create an instance of the data service class provided by the SDK. The data service factory builds the data service class by providing the context that contains the OAuth access token and secret, service type as QBO, and the connected companies 
QuickBooks ID. If the item does not exist in QuickBooks, we build the item by mapping data from an app item to the QuickBooks item and then create it in QuickBooks. One thing to note when creating a service item in QBO is the item needs to be associated with the correct income account subtype. For time tracking, the correct income account subtype for an item is service fee income. We retrieve the appropriate account from QuickBooks and associate it with the item. Finally, we take the ID of the created entity in QuickBooks and store it with the associated service item in the local app database. Creating employees and customers follows the same pattern as creating items. The next step is creating the time entry for a given employee against a given customer for a given service item. The create time activity in QBO method in the QBO Gateway class is the method responsible for creating the time activity. In this method, we create an instance of the data service class. Next, we create the time activity. In the time activity mapper, we map the appropriate employee, customer, and service item. We create the actual time activity where we set the hours and minutes for the time activity. In this sample app, we use the service item's hourly rate, but you can choose whichever model fits your customer's needs. Now we set the billable status of the time activity as not billable, and the time activity type to employee. Next, we create the time activity in QBO, taking the ID of the resulting entity and storing it on the associated time activity in the local app database. Finally, we generate an invoice for the time activity we just created. Once the invoice is generated, we can view it in QuickBooks. The Create Invoice in QBO in the QBO Gateway class is the method responsible for creating the invoice. In this method, we first create an instance of the data service. In the Invoice Mapper, we create an invoice line for each time activity, specifying the amount, description, quantity, rate, and item reference. Once the invoice is created, the invoice needs to be associated with a term. In this sample app, we are using the default net 30 term that we retrieve from QuickBooks and associate with the invoice. Once the invoice is generated, we set its local status to build and save it in the local database. That wraps up our sample app for time tracking. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. If you need additional help, please visit our community page.